Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SewSpire.com and today I am here to show you how to sew this Ultimate Shopper's Tote. This particular bag is generously sized and unique in that it has a interior divider compartment which you can reposition to sort groceries and such. I think this would also make a really fabulous pool bag and those interior dividers are big enough for you to roll up your towels and plop them in. For our bag that we're going to sew together today, I did opt to use a thicker home decor weight fabric for the exterior, whereas the prototype was crafted completely from 100% cotton quilt weight fabric. You can use either. I just thought it'd be nice to see how the thicker home decor fabric sews up. So to begin, all of the measurements that I'm going to give you will be listed in the notes. So check there for a full roundup. You're going to start with the exterior body panel, which the length of is 40 inches and the width is 24 inches. So get that giant rectangle and fold it in half so that you have a smaller rectangle that's 24 inches across and 20 inches tall. And then you're going to fold that in half and your folded edge will be here at the base. And I want you to notch out a four inch corner. And that'll look like that. And you're going to do the same thing for the interior. And then you will have a piece that looks like this with the notched out corners. And that's to give the bag the depth at the bottom. Then line just that exterior piece with a like size piece of Pellon. And I use the 809 Decor Bond which I picked up at Walmart. You iron that on and then, so you can wash this bag without any worries of that Pellon coming loose in the washer dryer, stitch across the top and the bottom edge and then run two rows of stitching down either side and I came in six inches. Then that Pellon is gonna be nicely attached because you could see, I'm sure if I spent more time ironing it, it would still be fused to that, but I'm going to sew it and go with it. It worked for the first one. Okay, so to craft the exterior, fold that panel back in half so it looks like this and stitch down either side using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now both sides are closed up. Just go ahead and take a minute and check your seams and make sure you have two, la two layers of Pellon and two layers of fabric. If that looks good, then come in from the top there and open that up and align those corner edges. And this is going to give the bag its depth and you'll just stitch from edge to edge with the same 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then you're going to need to repeat that on the other side. And now, believe it or not, that exterior is complete. You can turn that right side out and poke out your corners. And then go ahead and take that top edge of the bag and fold it inward an inch and then press that at your iron. And the easiest way to do that is to fold this flat, take that top edge, Fold it inward and then go ahead and press that at the iron and set it aside until we are ready to fit the interior. Now the interior of this 
bag is crafted from the cotton, you could use the canvas as well. I just happen to have extra of this cotton. It's the exact same size piece as the exterior was. And what I need you to do for this so that the interior divided panels come together easily for you is after you have that all cut out and your corners notched, take that and fold it in half one more time so your folded edge and corners are at the bottom and your raw edges or top is up here at the top and then press that right down the center so you get a clear center mark there and we're going to set this down here no pell on for this because it'll just get too stiff for you we want to craft the interior dividers which are fashioned from pieces of fabric that measure 24 inches across by 20 inches tall so here's what it looks like unstitched and the 24 inches is the width of the bag so you're going to take that and you're going to fold it in half and we're going to sew a tube so you just want to stitch across that top edge so now you have a piece that's 24 inches wide by 10 inches tall and we're going to stitch right across that top raw edge to create a tube and you're going to need to make two of these so flip that tube right side out and then take that seam and center that just as I've done here and then head on over to your iron and press everything nice and flat okay so I have my two tubes or interior dividers pressed and that center seam is on the back edge there centered so what I want to do is take my interior panel and I'm just going to work on one side the notches this is a big piece of fabric so the notches are here and this is the top and I'm going to take one of those dividers and I'm going to lay that on this panel here two inches from that notch two inches up okay so I want to I'm going to put some pins in this so you can see how that is laying okay I have that divider on there two inches up from the notch and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side And I put that seam facing down on that panel. And then what you're going to do is stitch all the way down the center of this so that you divide those two panels in half. Now my interior dividers have been divided in half. And I want to take this panel and fold it in half again, align those little notches at the bottom, align your tops and your sides, and you can go ahead and pin this in place so that those dividers don't slip while you're sewing this. And you're going to create now from this point the interior exactly like we fashioned that exterior. We're going to stitch down each side and then we're going to align those corners and create that base. But it is again important to use several pins because you don't want either of those dividers to get away from you while you're sewing up those sides. So there's the top, everything's pinned up. The dividers are sandwiched inside and you can see the corners at the base there. I'm going to stitch on the right side, the left side, and then fashion those corners. Again, using the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And now that interior is complete. 
and you're going to take that top edge and fold it outward an inch and then press that at the iron. Your interior should look like this so the two dividers will are open and you can put your hand all the way down in there. They're not attached at the bottom and that's so you can adjust them on the inside. It's without the exterior. This doesn't have a lot of body, but you could tell from the photos how those will work. So now bring back this in exterior and go ahead and fit that interior inside of there. Once you get that inside, you're going to begin by lining up the side seams on either end and put a pin in that to hold it and then after you have the sides aligned you can go ahead and work your way around pinning as you go. Okay, And now you can see with that exterior that this bag now has substantially more body. It will stand on its own and that is a result of the fabric and that Pellon interfacing. And now I can give you a better peek at that interior. So the next step here is to craft the handles, which you'll need two rectangles, which measure five inches across by 28 inches long. And I line those with a like size five inch strip of Pellon. That Pellon really adds a lot of stability to that handle. So we're going to craft this handle in typical sew spire fashion. You're going to fold it in half long ways, press that, open it up and bring those outer edges in to meet on the center line. Press again, fold that over, press again, and then stitch down that open end and the opposite end to create a nice finished strap. Repeat that twice for two straps, then bring back your bag, go ahead and fold that nice and flat and you're going to center your straps on that accent stitching line that you created, which just for your reference is five inches in from either side and I just like to center them. I tuck them down in there about two inches. You could do less if you like a longer handle drop. Since this is designed to be a grocery bag, it's going to be a heavy load, so I want it to sit a little higher on my shoulder. So there you have that. Flip it over and go ahead and center the strap on the other side. Then we're going to remove this machine deck and sit the bag up on there and stitch all the way around that. I'm going to reinforce these handles with back stitching and then I'm going to come in and put another row of stitching because again this is going to be used for really heavy load. So here's what it looks like before I stitch that top down. And just move slowly as you go around removing the pins and then take that time to reinforce at the handle. I typically begin this process at that side seam, which does have a little extra bulk there, so go nice and slow. Okay, so I've reinforced those handles and for the most part the bag is completely done. You could totally use it like this, but I want to add one more nice detail to this and that is a padded, removable, washable base. This is my first time working with this foam. It's Flex Foam, also by Pellon, number 77 and I picked that up at Walmart too and it is very nice to sew with. So we're going to sew a little case for that foam and this piece of material measures 36 inches long by 9 inches wide and just fold that in half, 
so that you have a piece that then is 18 by 9. Stitch up those two long edges. For this you can use 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then turn that right side out through that top open edge. Go ahead and press it if you like. Mine is pretty nice right now so I'm not going to mess with that. Then take your piece of foam which measures 8 by 15. I just kind of fold that in half and then fit that in there. You just want to make sure that you pull that those corners all the way down. And then when you're happy how that is positioned in there, then take that top open edge and fold it inward several inches there so that it rests nicely against the top of that or the edge of that foam. And then you can go ahead and stitch that close. You can sew right through this foam. It's very nice and it is machine washable as well. So stitch that close and then go ahead and stitch down the center of that so that it never shifts or bunches on you. Now you have a totally removable, flexible, padded base for the inside of your ultimate shopper tote and you just press those dividers against each side and then position this in there and it is sized perfectly for the base of that bag and the purpose of that is twofold one is to offer obviously a soft landing spot for like your glass jars and wine or other fragile items such as candles and the like and then also too to give you a um, protective surface there in case there's any leaks or spills and you can just save a little time and not wash the whole bag and just throw that insert in the washer depending on how you bag your groceries and things like if you have one dedicated for meats you may want to wash the bag more often than say the one that's for produce so anyways i'm thrilled with how this turned out i hope that you enjoy the project and will subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so i'm going to put some other useful links to some features that we offer. We live stream on Tuesday, we host a vlog on Thursday, and publish an e-newsletter on Wednesdays. So check the description for more information. And then I will be back next week with another inspired sewing project. Until then, please know, as always, the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Have a beautiful week, everyone.